right? Well, welcome. <laughs> Mark Estrada is a hydrogeologist for the Sonoma County Water Agency's Water Resource Planning Section. The primary focus of his work at the Water Agency involves leading feasibility, feasibility studies for enhanced groundwater recharge projects and managing groundwater monitoring programs and technical studies in support of collaborative groundwater management activities. His role also includes investigating the interaction and exchange of surface water and groundwater associated with the water agency's production facility along the Russian River. He's a professional geologist and certified hydrogeologist in the state of California and received his Bachelor of Science degree in geology with an emphasis on hydrologic science from the University of California at Davis. His number, right, his hydrogeologist number is 757, which is important because Jeff in the back, Jeff, hand up. Jeff, Jeff is also one of these guys and his number is 436. So we've got two of them here today and I wanna welcome so much Marcus to the Sunday Symposium. Great introduction. Everybody hear me okay? Great, well, good morning and uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, my goal here is really to try and make this, uh, what's known as a hidden resource, the groundwater that's beneath our feet, mostly beneath our feet, a little more visible because it's also in our faucets when we open our taps. It's also makes up a portion of the irrigation that goes out to water our crops here in the valley and throughout Sonoma County and the world. And uh, also plays a role in providing stream flows and water for wetlands and ecosystems in our, in our groundwater basins. So that's, that's my overall goal. Let me get the presentation set up here. And I did practice this. Okay, I think we're in business. So yeah, I just wanted to start out just to explain uh, a little bit more about uh, who I worked work for and then give you a crash course in uh, groundwater hydrology with kind of an emphasis on, you know, some of the more important concepts that, that uh, are useful to know. Um, talk a little bit about how groundwater resources are managed in the state and the importance of groundwater, which is something the state fairly recently um, recognized with the passage of a new law back in 2015 that applies to certain areas within the state of California that requires active groundwater management. And Sonoma Valley is, is one of those areas, the Sonoma Valley groundwater uh, subbasin. And uh, as part of complying and addressing this, uh, this new law, a new agency had to be formed known as the uh, Groundwater Sustainability Agency, or GSA. Um, that agency has developed a groundwater sustainability plan, or GSP, and is now working on implementing this plan. So I'm gonna apologize right now for the acronyms. I'll try and avoid them, but just as a reminder, GSP is the plan, GSA is the agency, and SIGMA is the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, or the law that the state passed back in uh, 2015. So starting out with uh, where I work, I work for the Sonoma County Water Agency or Sonoma Water. Our main uh, focus is really we're a wholesale water provider. We have water rights on the Russian River associated with uh, Lake Mendocino. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Uh, there we go, uh, with Lake Mendocino and uh, Lake Sonoma. 
And we uh, divert, we control releases from those reservoirs in the summer and divert water from the uh, Russian River near Forestville, uh, where we have these, uh, what are known as collector wells. These are uh, very large wells that are within the uh, shallow um, sands and gravels beneath the river. And they produce that water, it's mostly surface water that gets induced into the aquifer and comes out as drinking water. And it's uh, naturally filtered through those gravels. And really all we have to do is, is treat it with chlorine and a little bit of pH adjustment before delivering it into pipelines and uh, into people's taps for drinking. Um, the, uh, we, we mostly deliver that water to urban areas. So our customers are most of the larger cities and water districts within Southern uh, Sonoma County. So here that includes the city of Santa Rosa, includes the city of Santa uh, Sonoma, the Valley of the Moon Water District. Um, those cities and water districts also have their own well fields, most of them do, that they use to supplement the supplies that they receive from, from our Russian river system. Uh, so in times when there's less water available from the river, like this current and, and past droughts, they'll generally utilize groundwater more to help supplement those supplies. And then during wetter years, they can rest those wells, um, not pump them as much and take more surface water. So the aquifers are able to replenish and there's more water available during future droughts so that we're better prepared. Um, here in Oakmont, um, you all are served by the city of Santa Rosa or Santa Rosa water. And the water that comes through your, your pipelines that come out your, your taps um, is generally about 93% of that water that we produce from those collector wells on the, on the Russian River. And about 7% of it comes from uh, two wells that the city of Santa Rosa has along farmer wells, these farmers lane. These are actually uh, artesian wells that uh, have always been artesian and are still continue to be artesian. Um, in that area, which means that the groundwater level is actually above the surface of the land. And so the well has to be pressurized. Um, the Sonoma water is also involved in flood control in some areas, some of our channels, we work on maintaining those. Uh, the, we also operate several sanitation or, or um, water uh, treatment plants, wastewater treatment plants and, and deliver recycled water in some areas and, and are also involved in and energy resources to reduce our, our overall carbon footprint. Um, related to groundwater, when I started at, the, at Sonoma Water back in 2008, we were um, involved in a lot of cooperative study programs with researchers from the US Geological Survey getting better information about all of our main groundwater basins in the county. And then we are, our role in implementing this new law is we have contracts with these new agencies to provide the technical services and, and develop the groundwater sustainability plans um, through agreements. Um, and we're also members of each of those, uh, each of those agencies. So starting out with uh, what, what groundwater is. So some of the important concepts um, are to understand that groundwater is really an important part of the overall hydrologic cycle. So we have uh, water that, uh, that falls as, as precipitation and some of that water will uh, infiltrate directly into the ground, just percolate um, right in. And then some of that water will run off into, uh, into streams and, and, and rivers. And some of that water will get evapotranspired back up into the, uh, into the atmosphere. Some of the water that makes it into the streams and rivers will then later percolate into the groundwater basin in certain areas. So um, the connection between surface water and groundwater and how groundwater fits into the overall hydrologic cycle is, is, is really an important thing to, to keep in mind. Um, aquifers are, are made up of mostly sands and gravels in, in most areas. That's, that'll be your most productive uh, zones within a, an aquifer system. 
There's also uh, commonly layers of, of clay that'll separate um, different aquifer zones. You can have two different types of, of, of aquifers within an overall groundwater basin that, that provide very different function. Often the deeper aquifer is where a lot of your higher product capacity wells are located. Um, the shallow aquifer often supports uh, rural domestic wells and is also important because that's where we get our surface water and groundwater interaction and keeping that shallow aquifer full also helps keep our, our streams uh, flowing during the, the summer and, and fall time current. So this slide is just kind of to show how groundwater moves. It's important to, to know that groundwater is not just in an underground pool underneath our feet. It's not just like a reservoir that's sitting there. It's constantly moving, although it moves at a much slower rate than surface water because it has to get through all the pore spaces between those, those sands and gravels. So the, the, the time for groundwater to flow from where it gets recharged to, to where it ultimately uh, comes out of the ground, either at a, a stream or in some cases uh, somebody's well, um, can be on the order of years to decades to, to thousands of years. Um, the USGS has done some studies in, in Sonoma Valley where they can age date the, uh, the groundwater and have found that um, some of that groundwater in the deeper aquifer systems is up to 30,000 years old. Um, so um, different type of time frame than many of us are used to thinking about. Um, let's see. So the other important concept I want to focus on is just the surface water and groundwater um, connection and how that uh, kind of occurs. So essentially this um, is showing a, a shallow aquifer where the, the groundwater level within that aquifer is higher than the level that's within the stream. When that occurs, um, groundwater flows into the stream and helps provide some of the, the base flows and, and, and summertime flows um, because they, it's a kind of a constant cooler source of, of water. So you can also have a natural condition where groundwater levels are below the, the bottom of the stream bed. And in those areas, the stream actually provides an important function for groundwater because those are the locations where you generally have a lot of sands and gravels beneath riverbeds. And so you get really a focused recharge uh, of groundwater. So that's a, an area where the streams replenish our groundwater system. Um, so when you have a developed groundwater basin and, and wells are installed within the basin, um, that'll change the, the, the level of groundwater. It can change that interaction between streams and, uh, and the aquifer. And so this kind of shows an example of, of how that, that happens, where you have water being pumped from a well, the groundwater table drops, and water then moves from the stream into the aquifer, and, and in some cases towards the wells. Um, that if that's uh, if that occurs over um, you know intensive uh, uh, intensively near the stream, you can have a situation where groundwater levels drop below the stream, um, and then eventually under kind of a, a worst case scenario, um, you can have streams that that normally flow or used to flow um, go dry if there's too much pumping um, in that shallow aquifer near streams. So how do we understand um, groundwater and our groundwater basins um, in terms of getting an understanding of, of how groundwater moves through the basin? It's really important to understand our local geology. And a lot of the information that, that we get is from wells that are drilled within the basin. Every time a well is drilled, a well driller is required to, uh, to uh, essentially do a report that, that describes the geology that's encountered as well as the uh, construction of the well. And so, uh, you know, these well logs are not always the most detailed. And so, uh, because they're, they're usually well drillers that are actually doing the, the logging. So you have to kind of take them with a, a grain of salt sometimes, but um, there's about 2000 wells that have been drilled in, in Sonoma Valley groundwater basin over the years. And so we, for this basin, we were able to kind of comb through those logs, find the 
better quality logs and, and construct a, a kind of a, a picture of, of where the aquifers are, where the clay layers are, and, and how those shallow and deeper aquifers are, are separated. Um, this is just a, a picture of a, a well being drilled if any of you have, uh, has anybody here owned a, a well before? All right, several of you. So you know how this is a kind of a messy operation if you've ever had to, to drill one. Um, and it's you know really important to, to maintain those wells properly and uh, to, in order to um, you know, sustain their, their use. Um, it's also, uh, when we drill wells for, for monitoring, we typically have them logged by a, a geologist and there's tools that can be run down the, the hole as they're drilling to, to get geophysical tools that, that give you better, higher resolution of, of what those materials are. So that's something that um, we're currently uh, doing. We've got a grant to install some monitoring wells in Sonoma Valley. So we'll be collecting some high quality data in, uh, in several areas soon. So going back to our, our just to introduce you to this, uh, this new law that, that I discussed, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. As I mentioned, it came into effect in January, 2015. And it really came about um, because of the, the drought that occurred in that, that time frame, 2014. And it was really pressure um, on you know, the, the state politicians uh, due to really serious issues that are occurring in the Southern Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, where over pumping of, of the uh, groundwater aquifers there has actually caused the land surface to, to sink and is damaging the California aqueduct and, and impacting um, uh, uh, wells and, and water quality for, uh, for uh, community water systems down there. But they, they did apply it statewide. It doesn't apply everywhere in the state. They, the state went through a process where they ranked and prioritized all of the ground, 500 groundwater basins in the state. And they found about 90 of them that um, are deemed either medium or high priority that are, are required to comply with this new law. And we have three of those basins here in Sonoma County. That's the Santa Rosa Plain, uh, just to the east of us, Sonoma Valley that I'm going to be focusing on today, and then Petaluma Valley. So in, even though we don't have as serious a problems as they do down in uh, the San Joaquin Valley, it is really important to understand that our local region and these three basins um, groundwater is a really important resource. It, it makes up um, generally about half of the overall water supply when you look at it, you know, across the spectrum of urban, agricultural, um, rural, residential, and uh, local businesses are also rely on that, that groundwater. Um, as I mentioned, the Russian River um, supplies make up another uh, big chunk, and that primarily is going to the, the urban water users. Um, local surface water makes up a, a portion of, of supply. This is water that's diverted, for example, from Sonoma Creek here for uh, irrigation mostly. And then recycled water is, uh, is increasingly becoming a, a very valuable resource in terms of its ability to offset the need for potable water or groundwater. So this is a, a map showing the Sonoma Valley groundwater subbasin. It essentially goes from uh, San Pablo Bay um, up to, uh, you know, includes most of Glen, Anna, Glen Ellen and towards Kenwood. The actual groundwater basin here is shown as the the light colored inside this blue dashed line and its uh, limits are defined by the state, oops, by the state geologists. They primarily draw those boundaries based on a geologic map. Um, here in Sonoma Valley, we had um, a voluntary plan before this new state law came into effect where we were really studying the entire Sonoma Creek watershed. And so as, as I've described as part of the plan, we're develop, we've developed 
um, we are including monitoring data and information from these, what we call the contributing watershed areas. So there's a connection between these areas. And uh, Oakmont is actually located outside of the, uh, the Sonoma Valley subbasin and outside the jurisdiction of this new groundwater sustainability agency. So that's important to remember as well. Um, the uh, Oakmont is mostly located in what's known as the Kenwood Valley groundwater basin, which is one of those basins that, that didn't make it to the median priority. It's considered a very low priority by the state and is not required to comply with, uh, with the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. Um, but still has valuable groundwater resources that are important to, uh, to understand. And so we do have some monitoring data um, that we continue to, to track um, from mostly from the southern half of the, of the Kenwood Valley groundwater basin. So Sigma, there's kind of three main steps for complying with the act. And uh, if the local agencies fail to um, comply with any of these steps and meet the deadlines that are shown here. The State Water Resources Control Board um, has the authority under this act to step in and intervene, start charging um, people money for uh, fees for, uh, for their intervention and, and do what they think needs to be done, which would likely be curtailing people's pumping if there's problems in the basin until the locals are able to, um, to do their job and, and get back together and, and, uh, and comply with, uh, with all of these different deadlines. Um, so the first step is to form these new groundwater sustainability agencies. So that deadline occurred in, in June of 2017. The next step is to develop groundwater sustainability plans for our basins. Those were due this past January. Um, 31st, we got ours in. And then step three is to implement those plans and become sustainable within 20 years after adopting those plans. And I'll, I'll describe a little bit about what uh, sustainability means in terms of groundwater management. So starting with the, the agency that formed, again, this happened in, in 2017. And uh, the, the, the state law um, identifies the different types of agencies that can be groundwater sustainability agencies. You could have multiple agencies within a single basin. So a city could be a, a, a groundwater sustainability agency in their jurisdiction. You can have the county cover the other areas. In our, in Sonoma County, each of the basins, um, the different agencies got together and uh, you know, worked, through, negotiated, and, and developed these new uh, joint powers uh, agreements that essentially establish a single agency in each basin. So there's a Sonoma Valley GSA, there's a Petaluma Valley GSA, and there's a Santa Rosa Plain GSA, and they all have their own uh, board of directors that's made up of the uh, various agencies that are part of that JPA. Um, for the Sonoma Valley, that includes the, the county and, and Susan Gorin um, sits on the board and she's the chair, your neighbor, Susan Gorin. She's the chair of that agency. Um, and then the city of Sonoma, Valley of the Moon Water District, uh, Sonoma Resource Conservation District um, provides um, agricultural um, representation on that board. Uh, and then the Sonoma Water also has a seat on the board and supervisor David, David Rabbit um, sits on the Sonoma Valley board. And then uh, the North Bay Water District, which is agricultural irrigation district in Southern California is also eligible to be a, a, a GSA and they have a seat on that board as well. Uh, the board of directors also established a, an advisory committee um, that's uh, made up of, of representatives of, of, of different interest groups within the uh, sub-basin, environmental interests, business interests, agricultural interests. We have a number of, uh, of geologists um, that, that sit on the board to provide some technical expertise. And uh, both the board and the advisory committee uh, meet regularly in, in publicly noticed meetings. And if you're ever interested in and checking those out, you can find uh, the 
meeting calendar on the uh, on the website. Um, so the next uh, step was to develop these groundwater sustainability plans or GSPs. These are pretty large uh, technical documents um, that uh, essentially have three um, kind of questions that they're set up to answer. What are the basin conditions, the existing conditions in the basin? Are those conditions sustainable? And uh, if not, how can the basin be managed to achieve sustainability? And if they are, how should the basin be managed to make sure that it remains sustainable in the state? gives the agencies uh, 20 years to, to kind of show that they're sustainable. Um, so the, the plan is actually um, built, is built on and relies upon a lot of previous studies and planning efforts that have occurred here in the uh, Sonoma Valley going back to uh, 1960 when the USGS uh, did their first uh, study of the basin. Um, that provides a lot of the basic data that's really useful for us, um, as well as information on what groundwater conditions were like back in 1960. So it gives us kind of something to compare to in terms of our uh, current conditions. Uh, the State Department of Water Resources did a, a pretty uh, comprehensive study back in 1982. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, Sonoma County Water Agency uh, worked with the USGS back in uh, the early 2000s, and, and they published a study of the groundwater basin and built a computer model for us back in 2006. Um, right after that study uh, was done, a voluntary effort was, was done to uh, form a, a voluntary groundwater management plan that worked for about a 10-year period on uh, increasing the, the monitoring of of uh, wells here in the basin, getting better information on, on groundwater changes over time, starting to look at uh, types of projects that, that could be done to improve our sustainability and really provide a lot of the basic information and, and framework that, that was needed to develop this now state required uh, groundwater sustainability plan, which as I mentioned was completed back in uh, 2022. So, um, quite a few building blocks there. You can see over time, the, the covers of these documents also uh, improved uh, as we went along. Um, so this map's a little busy, but I, I just like to kind of show it to show that uh, throughout the basin, and again, this is showing the entire um, watershed, the actual basin is kind of hard to see here, but it is that blue dashed line. Um, each of these colors represents um, kind of a different water use sector and, and different um, water types. So the, uh, the brownish areas here are people, primarily rural residential areas that are relying solely on, on groundwater. Um, the city of Sonoma and the Valley of the Moon Waters District, again, are primarily utilizing that aqueduct water that comes from the Russian River but they also have their own wells that they also pump from uh, to supplement those supplies. Uh, recycled water that's produced at our uh, treatment plant down on 8th Street East, again, is a really valuable resource and is used to irrigate many of the, the vineyards and also some, some parks and now the Sonoma Valley High School um, in, uh, in Southern Sonoma Valley. So um, this uh, map on the left here shows the, the density of uh, water wells within the, uh, within the basin and, and contributing watershed area with the, uh, the warmer colors representing areas where there's a much higher density of, uh, of water wells. Um, you can see in, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, Sonoma Valley, the kind of the El Verano area here, and then this area uh, kind of east and uh, north and southeast of the, of the city of Sonoma uh, are areas where there's just a really high density of, of, uh, of water wells. Most of the water wells are rural residential, but you also have a lot of uh, agricultural irrigation, vineyard irrigation happening in those areas. There's some public water supply wells in those areas. And then in the case of El Verano is also uh, the golf course, which is uh, primarily reliant on, on groundwater. 
So not surprisingly, um, in those two areas is, are where we see um, most of our uh, kind of problem issues here in Sonoma Valley, where we do have some um, long-term declining groundwater levels that are occurring. Um, they've been occurring in most cases for the past few decades. Um, so this is kind of a, a long-term issue. And uh, they primarily occur in the deeper aquifer system where um, that, that recharge, that annual replenishment is, takes a lot longer to, uh, to occur. So that's uh, one of the issues that needs to, to, needs to happen. So the deep aquifer system is the way we define it is generally uh, below 200 feet below the ground surface. So the shallow aquifer system is, is from about the, the water table to about 200 feet below ground surface. Yeah, thank you. Um, the other thing that the, so you know, th these figures I'm providing here are from our, what's known as the basin setting section of the groundwater sustainability plan this is kind of describing what we know about the basin. Um, understanding the geology is, is really key, especially in our region where we have a really complex geology. Um, this is uh, on the right here, this is a geologic map of the, uh, of the area. The, the reds and the, and the browns here are, are volcanic rocks known as the Sonoma Volcanics. Um, the yellows are uh, mostly sediments, silt, sands, and gravels that make up the basin areas. And these um, uh, kind of lighter uh, tan colored uh, features are um, older sedimentary rocks known as the Glen Ellen Formation. And the, uh, um, the other thing that's important to know is we have a number of fault zones within the basin, the, the Rogers Creek Fault Zone. Um, goes along the, the eastern boundaries of the, of the sub-basin in some areas. A fault that's uh, hard to see here, known as the east side fault, is also appears to be a really important fault in terms of how groundwater moves in the basin. Um, this uh, image on the, on the left here is what's known as a, a cross-section. So if you can imagine kind of taking a slice from the basin, picking it up on your side, kind of like a, a cake, slicing a cake, and looking at how those layers are. This is our interpretation uh, along this one uh, section across uh, uh, the, 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 the Sonoma Valley here, C to C prime. <laughs> Um, so you can see the volcanic rocks underlay the basin and, and in some case extend out into the basin. And you have fault zones that can offset those, uh, those different aquifer units. And in some cases form barriers to how groundwater flows. You get a lot of clay sometimes that builds up along fault zones because of all the, the movement. And so that clay can form a barrier um, to how groundwater is moving. And, and we do see those effects likely um, east of the east side fault where there's a lot of wells, but there's limited ability for water to move into that area. So that's one of the areas where we see more, one of the uh, more pronounced uh, groundwater level drops in the basin. Um, the uh, Rogers Creek fault zone also forms a barrier outside of, uh, of this basin. Um, it, uh, it actually keeps groundwater levels very high east of the fault. And that's why those wells on Farmer's Lane are, are still artesian because the, the, the groundwater levels uh, uh, built up behind the fault zone. So kind of the heart of these groundwater sustainability plans or GSPs are these six groundwater sustainability indicators that are required to be um, addressed in the plans and the um, the, the GSAs are required to assess kind of the status of each of these sustainability indicators and establish um, criteria um, to determine whether they're sustainable or not. And so they establish what are known as minimum thresholds for each and measurable objectives in terms of where we want to be. Um, the sustainability indicators are the chronic lowering of groundwater levels, the groundwater levels that keep dropping and don't recover during drought periods, a uh, reduction in, in groundwater storage, so the, the reduction of the amount of groundwater that's within your basin, very closely related to, uh, to groundwater levels. 
uh, land surface subsidence that we're see, seeing in the uh, you know, uh, Central Valley um, is another thing um, that uh, is a sustainability indicator if it's caused by, by groundwater pumping. There's other causes of subsidence that need to be taken into account as well. Uh, seawater intrusion is another indi um, indicator that's important. Oops. And that can occur um, when you're pumping near the ocean. You, if you drop your water levels too low and they drop below the level of the ocean, you can have seawater move in. And that's something that's occurred um, pretty significantly in Southern California, Orange County, the Los Angeles basin, uh, Salinas Valley are, are pretty uh, badly impacted by seawater intrusion that, that causes you know, people's wells to go salty and, and unusable. Um, here in Sonoma Valley, we have the Baylands area where we have more brackish water. And so that's something that, that we need to better study. We really don't have a lot of information on, in that area on how that brackish water may move into our basin. Um, we don't see any, any current um, seawater intrusion, but it is something that is definitely a potential risk for the basin that needs to be better studied. Um, water quality degradation is another sustainability indicator. If you're over pumping, you can have poorer water quality move in from other sources. And then the, the sixth one, um, which is uh, one I spent a little time on earlier, was the surface water depletion. So um, managing the amount of, of, uh, of surface water that can be depleted by, by groundwater pumping in those shallow aquifers. So just kind of a snapshot of, of, uh, of the conditions in the Sonoma Valley subbasin. Groundwater quality is generally in pretty good shape. You definitely have some areas where you have some uh, challenges for, for groundwater quality um, related to local uh, geology sometimes. Sometimes you can have uh, uh, contamination that has happened from land use activities. Um, that's generally in the shallow aquifer system. In terms of the GSA's responsibility, their responsibility is to make sure they don't really make things worse through their management of the basin, either the projects they do or you know, uh, conditions that are related to, to groundwater levels don't impact groundwater quality because there's many other regulatory agencies and, and rules related to groundwater quality. Um, here in Sonoma Valley, we don't see any evidence of the land surface actually subsiding due to groundwater pumping, but that is something that we will be monitoring going forward. And I'll show you a little bit of, of how we're, uh, we're doing that. Um, the other two areas where we really need more information and, and data and the groundwater sustainability plan is focused on um, filling data gaps and, and improving our monitoring for these two indicators, seawater intrusion, as I mentioned, and then uh, the potential for uh, surface water depletion due to groundwater pumping is something that's it's really new for most uh, um, groundwater resource uh, management efforts in the state is, is getting better information on, on how groundwater pumping affects stream flows. Um, you know, we need information for how ecosystems may be impacted. So it's really an area where the GSA is going to be working closely with uh, resource agencies that study, you know, our, our aquatic species and fish and under better understand how, how groundwater, um, you know, supports those features. So again, um, the, uh, the last two sustainability indicators are one that are a particular challenge in, in in Sonoma Valley, particularly the Southern Sonoma Valley, where we are seeing those uh, groundwater level declines in the deep aquifer system. And, uh, and along with that, a reduction in, in groundwater storage over time. So that's, that's really one of the, uh, those are kind of the areas that the GSA is gonna need to focus some of its actual projects um, on in the future. So this uh, diagram is just meant to show in Sonoma Valley, kind of the the overall water budget, this is part of the um, groundwater sustainability plan. And uh, a water budget is essentially, you can think of it kind of as a, a bank account. <clears throat> you have um, water that's going into your uh, basin through different sources. And 
in Sonoma Valley, a lot of that uh, water comes from the sides, from mountain front recharge that flows into the basin. Uh, we also have uh, water that just percolates um, through the basin. And these numbers here are in uh, AFY is acre feet per year. So this is our estimate using our computer model of how much uh, each source is contributing to the, uh, the basin. And an acre foot is, uh, is about 325,000 gallons of water, just to give you some perspective on that. Um, and then, you know, seepage from streams is also an important source of recharge, as I managed earlier. Um, in terms of the water that's coming out of the basin, you have uh, evapotranspiration by, uh, by plants, um, which uh, makes up a large component of the water budget. You have groundwater that's flowing into uh, streams in some locations. And then you have water that's being removed from, from wells. That's actually the, the largest um, uh, uh, source of, of removal of groundwater from the basin. And uh, here in uh, Sonoma Valley Subbasin, the overall percentage of, of groundwater use, I think it's about two thirds, uh, half to two thirds uh, is agricultural irrigation, primarily vineyard irrigation. And then rural domestic represents about 15 to 20% of those uses. And then public water supply systems are, I think about uh, 25 to 30% of the total water usage. Um, so when we kind of difference all those inflows and outflows, uh, we calculate the change in storage in the basin. And in this case, uh, the, we see an annual storage change of about 300 acre foot per year. That's a decline over time. And uh, this water budget um, period that I'm showing is actually a projection. Um, the, uh, the law requires that we project conditions out for 50 years and we incorporate climate change into that and assumptions on future land use changes as well. So this is kind of our potential roadmap, um, you know, things that we want to, um, you know, avoid over time are, are, you know, making sure we correct that, that storage change. And so um, there's a lot of uncertainties associated with the, this modeling and projections. So that's another thing that the GSA will need to be working over time is to, you know, track how closely actual conditions um, are, are playing out with respect to how they're projected in the plan and, and uh, the, the, the Sigma is meant to be adaptive. And so there's opportunities to make changes to the plan as we go forward based on new information that, that we get. So the, another important component of these plans is the monitoring networks. And uh, we have a monitoring network for each of those six uh, sustainability indicators I showed. Um, so the types of monitoring we're doing include, you know, direct measurements that are made from uh, wells within the basin. So these are measurements of the, of the uh, depth to water in wells. This is showing our shallow aquifer system monitoring network. Um, and uh, at each of these points, um, the GSA set what are known as uh, minimum thresholds and measurable objectives. So the minimum thresholds represents levels that um, we don't want to go below that could be indicated of, of uh, problems in the basin. And measurable objectives represent uh, depths at which you know, we want to be at to, to provide some buffer for uh, future droughts. And then uh, some of the, uh, one of the, the uh, sustainability indicators for subsidence, we're actually using um, uh, remote uh, sensing. So this is satellite-based data that the state provides that provides uh, changes in the uh, land surface down to about uh, 0.1 feet. So the really high resolution, you can see over time how the land surface may be changing. And for subsidence, you can actually get what's known as elastic um, subsidence where uh, the ground will, will go down and then back up. And subsidence essentially occurs um, when clays that are in the uh, aquifer system get compressed and, uh, and they can get, if it occurs over a long period of time and, and, and chronically you can dewater those clays and you can get permanent or inelastic subsidence. And that's what's occurring in, 
in the southern central valley. Here in uh, Sonoma County, most of our basins, we see elastics of sidons where it'll get compressed a bit, but then generally will rebound during wetter periods. But these are uh, um, the types of uh, monitoring networks that we have. And uh, we, the GSAs are also required to do annual reports that summarize monitoring data for each year. We just completed our first one um, a few weeks ago, they're due April 1st of each year. So that's actually on our website now. Um, so the other um, important component of these plans are, are the uh, planning and, uh, and implementation of any projects and management actions that might be needed to sustain or achieve um, sustainability within the basins. And so for, for our plans, we have a, a number of different uh, projects and actions that are identified. Uh, many of these are at the conceptual level. We need to get better information on, on the feasibility of some of these projects and actions so that the GSA is making an informed decisions on which ones to direct funding to. Um, but um, some, of the, some of the ones that can be done right off the bat include things like water use efficiency, and alternate water source projects. So these would be um, things like, uh, you know, uh, turf replacement with uh, water-wise uh, gardening for, for residents. Um, there's a lot of programs that are available to urban users in Sonoma County because there's a funding source from, from, uh, from those urban providers that, that have, have actually, I think, reduced the overall per capita water use by I think about 30, uh, 37% uh, since 2009 in our region by rolling out these different incentive programs to, to residents. And so those types of programs have never been available really for rural um, users. And so part of this plan is taking those programs and making them available to, uh, to others to, to reduce our groundwater use that way. I mean, really there's two main ways you can achieve sustainability. It's either you reduce your usage or you uh, increase your recharge. And so this plan kind of looks at a combination of both and uh, what the GSA will be working on over the next several years is finding the right balance of those two. Um, recycled water expansion is also another, um, uh, could be a really uh, important, uh, it has been an important uh, project within the Sonoma Valley groundwater basin. Um, deliveries of recycled water began, I think, in the early 2000s, and we saw in the areas where it's been delivered, groundwater levels uh, uh, recovering. Um, so we know it's it's something that that can help us achieve sustainability if we can get funding to uh, to expand its usage in certain areas. Um, the uh, main challenge with recycled water is that it's more available in the winter time when it's not so much needed. So the, the key is gonna be to find places where we can build storage so that we can store it and use it in the summer when it is needed. Um, different types of recharge projects, and I'll describe these in a little more detail in the next slide, include aquifer storage and recovery. Um, this is look, also known as groundwater banking. And this is uh, essentially taking uh, wintertime water from our Russian river system when we have higher flows and taking that water and, and uh, injecting it through wells and using our aquifers essentially as a reservoir rather than a, an above ground reservoir. Um, stormwater capture and recharge, that's looking at utilizing our local stormwater creeks and Sonoma Creek and, and its tributaries when, when those, those stormwater flows are much higher and taking that water out of the channel where you can and, and diverting it out and, uh, and allowing it to infiltrate rather than just running straight off out into San Pablo Bay, slowing down some of that water and like, giving it a chance to, to infiltrate. And there's different techniques that are, uh, are, can be done for that. Um, the plan also includes a uh, policy option study. So the the state um, provides these groundwater sustainability agencies with a number of different um, new authorities, including the ability to, to limit pumping, to meter certain types of wells. And so in the early uh, years of implementation, the GSA will be looking at what types of policy options might make sense to help us achieve sustainability. 
So focusing on some of these uh, recharge type, uh, type solutions, um, these are just some examples. There's a lot of um, interest, um, a lot of pilot projects are being done in the uh, San Joaquin Valley on flooding agricultural lands, um, almond orchards and grapevines. And uh, there's actually um, a pilot that was done um, in uh, Santa Rosa Plain groundwater sun basin. So this is taking water and flooding um, vineyards in the, uh, in the winter time and, uh, and using those fields essentially as, as recharge areas. Um, so you got to have the right crop types. Um, you know, the, the growers need to make sure that that that, um, that, that type of operation doesn't, doesn't cause any problems with their, their, uh, with the roots of the, of the vines, but uh, it has been shown to be successful. And there's actually a, a $7 million grant that just got awarded to a, a, a tribe in, in Alexander Valley to, uh, to implement uh, one of these types of projects up near the Russian River. Um, so we're, uh, we're excited to see how that works. Um, another way you can enhance recharge is through just the, or preserve recharge really is to, you know, uh, protect natural recharge areas. So part of the plan includes mapping recharge areas and identifying where it would be beneficial to, to keep um, areas uh, natural, to provide that natural recharge function, particularly along reaches of streams that are, are providing recharge. Um, percolation ponds are another uh, technique. This is something that the Santa Clara Valley Water District has been doing for years down in the Santa Clara Valley, um, where they take actually state water project uh, water and find areas that are high recharge and they build detention ponds and, and infiltrate water there. That's something that can be done maybe some along some of our flood control channels. And then again, aquifer storage and recovery um, that I described is where we're taking that wintertime water from the, the our Russian River facilities and injecting it into the uh, the aquifer um, for uh, for storage to help meet uh, summertime demands. Uh, the Valley Vinland Water District actually just got a grant to uh, implement aquifer storage and recovery on a couple of their wells. And uh, Sonoma Water, we have three wells groundwater wells in the Santa Rosa Plain, and we're converting two of those wells to be these aquifer storage and recovery type wells. And th those are projects that will benefit the groundwater basins, but they're not necessarily being directly funded by the Groundwater Sustainability Agency. That's state grant funding. And in some cases, you know, uh, other agencies are doing projects that also benefit groundwater resources. Um, so kind of smaller scale examples of, of recharge. So this would be things that, you know, a typical property owner or homeowner could, could implement our uh, water-wise gardening. Um, this is the uh, Maloney uh, water-wise garden down at the uh, community center in, in the city of Sonoma. Um, so there's things like building swales, um, uh, rainwater uh, capture um, is another really useful uh, technique that could just offset the, the use of, uh, of other potable sources, whether it's Russian River water or, uh, or groundwater. And then just uh, kind of landscaping um, uh, techniques that, that can you know, help prevent runoff and then allow things to infiltrate or another, another technique. Um, the groundwater sustainability plans also are required to identify data and information gaps, and we have quite a few of those in all of the uh, of the basins. I'm not going to read through each one of these, but uh, some of the the main data gaps are are getting a better understanding of where groundwater pumping is occurring, how much is occurring, at what depths. So, getting um, better information on that is is a high priority. Um, better understanding our, you know, aquifer systems in the basin, the role of faults and basin boundaries, uh, the interconnection between streams and uh, the effects of groundwater pumping. Um, and again, here in Sonoma Valley, um, really that interface between San Pablo Bay and, and our freshwater aquifer systems is, a, is another important one. So uh, this all does cost money. Um, we've been successful in getting quite a bit of grant funding uh, to help support the development of the groundwater sustainability plans. Each basin, each of those three basins got about $2 million from the, 
from the state. And uh, you can see, um, uh, but for implementation of the plan, uh, this is our approximate budget, um, kind of broken down into the different, different sectors. You can see the uh, data gaps is a big portion of that. Uh, the administration and operation of the Groundwater Sustainability Agency is also something that that costs money to run public meetings and, and do all the administration that's needed. So our estimate is it's about a, a million dollars a year in, in each basin. Um, so the GSA will be looking at uh, different uh, funding sources to, to implement step three of, of Sigma, continue looking uh, for grant funding, wherever those opportunities avail are available. Again, uh, funding from, from member agencies has also uh, contributed to the development of the plan and uh, projects that are done by member agencies will also help fund certain aspects of the, of the plan. Um, but there's also uh, currently a study in all three basins that you may have heard about that's uh, looking at uh, potentially assessing fees on groundwater users. So this is something that's, that's new and is, is currently being, being studied on uh, you know, what's the, the most fair way to, to charge actual users to, to implement these uh, sustainability plans. And I'll show the, uh, where you can get more information on that as we, as we move forward. Um, so as part of that fee study, one of the options that's being considered is charging based on estimated use. Um, this is a, a little challenging because the actual amount of pumping is really only measured and reported by a fairly small number of groundwater users. That's the public water supply systems are required to measure and, and report how much groundwater they're using. Um, other rural residential and uh, agricultural are not required to meter and report their usage. So we estimate their usage using land use data and, uh, and you know, on different crop types, different uh, what we know in terms of uh, how much different crops typically use for, uh, for water um, to estimate those uses. So that's something that we're currently working on to support these fee studies for each of the, uh, of the agencies. Um, so this is just showing the uh, um, kind of upcoming meetings related to those fee studies here in Sonoma Valley. We had our first community meeting on Zoom uh, end of March, and then the board on Monday will be uh, meeting and they'll be discussing uh, certain aspects of this uh, fee study. And then the next community meeting will be uh, May 5th. And we know that I think all both of those will be on Zoom and then the advisory committee and, and future board meetings are also shown here where uh, the fee study will I'm sure also be discussed. And we're, we're not sure if those are gonna be in person or on Zoom yet. So, but if you're interested, you can go to our, our website here that's shown on the bottom of each slide um, that'll have updated information on all those meetings. Um, so it's my last slide, just kind of a, a bottom line, what's important to know about Sonoma Valley groundwater basin is that we do have these issues in the deeper aquifer system um, that'll need to be addressed. Um, and, uh, and we have until 2042 essentially to do that. Um, we have a lot of data gaps, especially related to uh, surface water groundwater interaction and seawater intrusion. Um, well metering is a, is a policy option that'll be studied um, by the GSA. As I mentioned, um, you know, public supply wells are already metered. Uh, Sigma gives the authority for the GSAs to meter certain types of wells or require metering of certain types of wells, um, commercial, industrial, agriculture. It doesn't give the GSAs authority to require your typical rural residential or what's known as a de minimis user to, to, meter, their, to meter their wells. And uh, for funding, we're doing this fee study and we'll also continue to to look for grant opportunities and, and other partnerships. The state does recognize that, that many of these GSAs don't have the funding resources to implement their plans. And so they are uh, allocating quite a bit of the of state budget uh, money to help support um, some of these agencies that'll be, be available through, through grants. So yeah, with that. Thank you, Marcus. 
Thank you. comprehensive report. And we will be doing question and answers for about 10 minutes. We'll start here at the burger and then